morning, Destiny. Yeah, put your hands together right now. The Word of God says, I was glad when they said unto me. How many glad people do I have right here? They was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Anybody glad to be in God's house today? This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. Come on, rejoice right now.
You're my first. 
you give him praise. God, you are so good to us. Holy Spirit, we know you are moving in this room right now. Holy Spirit, we say come and do whatever it is that you want to do. May breakthrough exist in this service. You do everything on purpose. I can feel your spirit stir.
together. God, we know in this room right now that you already have plans for this service. So Father, right now, what we do as your people is we posture ourselves in alignment with what you want to do. God, we move out of the way. We set our ambitions to the side and we say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Would you come and fill this room would you come and fill our hearts? We want a fresh outpouring. God, we know that you are the God of signs and the God of wonders. We know that your word says that you are the healer. God, you are sovereign. If you told the sun when to shine and it did, then it will again. God, what you say, we will believe because we know that you are a man of your word. And so God, in this room, we just posture our hearts in an attitude of surrender and willingness. And we say, open our ears, Holy Spirit, for we will hear whatever you say to your church this morning. We love you. Come on, church, won't you give him praise all across this room? Well, good morning, Destiny. I am so glad you chose today to be in God's house. Why don't you turn to your neighbor and tell them hello? Such a great day, and we're so glad that you're here to worship with us. If you're with me in person, reach in front of you and get a connection card. Fill it out and take it to our welcome center, because guess what? We have a gift waiting just for you, and it's pretty cool. I got it one time. It's really good. If you're with us online, fill out one of our digital connection cards at destinyonline.com new, and one of our team members will get back with you. Here at Destiny, we believe in the power of prayer. And for 30 minutes after our service, you can meet one of our team members for prayer in our prayer room, right out the doors to the left. There's so much going on here at Destiny. I need you to do me a favor and check it out. Here at Destiny Christian School, we're empowering kids to thrive. Our focus on academics and spiritual growth allows your child to become who God created them to be as they experience a conservative education based on biblical truth. We want your child to develop a solid spiritual and academic foundation that will last a lifetime. We're now enrolling for preschool through seventh grade. Come see what sets Destiny apart today. Learn more at destiny.school.
Yeah. Yesterday was a busy day. Oh, my goodness. Woo. Yeah, we had 100 volunteers between our campuses in the rain, in the cold, wind, and they went to six different locations downtown to help the homeless. They went and had a prayer vigil at Planned Parenthood. They went and uh, just to neighborhoods around here and then Sacramento, gave out groceries, prayed for people, and then they also went to the regional mall here yes, and just did. evangelized and prayed with people at the mall. And uh, Destiny put, Threads was and, open. Yeah, and Destiny Threads, yes. yes. So many single moms came to Destiny Threats. I mean, all the way from Fairfield, people are being blessed. Wow, we are blessed to be a blessing, amen? Amen, amen. You know, uh, uh, the Sacramento campus, we are adopting an apartment complex right down the street from the church right. that we will continue to have relationship with and continue to influence and get to know these families. So, it's like the old days, adopt the block, adopt right, block. Michelle? Woo! Like the old days. Yeah, the, yes. Col the Colemans are watching. All right, you, your legacy <laughs> lives on. Yeah, yes. so anyway, what a great day. We were at the state capitol. We were at the state capitol, uh, yeah. Uh, praying together. I mean, it's pouring rain. Hundreds of people are there, and it's a don't mess with our kids prayer movement. Yes. So, yeah, it was awesome. It the was moms awesome. were out. Oh, man. Don't mess yes. with those mama bears. Wow. No, don't wow. mess with them. But it was there. It was it great. Was a, it was a full-on winter day, but nothing stopped us from going out. No, and yeah, we, we let our voices be heard. We were roaring, <laughs> all that. That was great. That was a full day yesterday, but we're glad you're all in church this morning. Mm -hmm. God bless every single one of you. We have a, a lot of people who are watching all over the place. Let me, I, I just got a few names here because there's so many. I just want to bring attention. Uh, Peggy from Tennessee. Yeah, right there. We love you, Peggy. Yeah. Then one, a regular church member, Becky and Ethan, they're in Cancun, suffering for Jesus. Oh, We're su suffering uh -huh. for Jesus. If you come back sunburn, we don't have any, you know, sympathy for you. And then here's a very unique one. Alvin and Lacey from the Middle East in Lebanon are watching right now. Wow, praise yeah. God. Praise God. Mm. So hopefully this service will be a blessing to you. Mm -hmm. Got so many great things that are going on here at, at Destiny. There's almost too many, but we continue our midweek for another five weeks. Got that going on. What are the ladies doing this week? We are having a party. Oh, a party. We're having a party. Don't miss it. It's a lot of fun. We have games. We will have testimonies just to acknowledge everything God's been doing as we've been learning his names. And so um, we have door prizes. Uh, there'll be lots of food, lots of flowers. Uh, that's good. Lots of flowers. We're going to be spiritual with the men, all right? We're going to have Dr. Hagen. Finally. Myself, Pastor Michael, we're, we're all three going to be a part of that. What do you mean, finally? <laughs> I was wondering when you'd say something. Yeah. But. But anyway, today is a great day. You're wearing your Masters Green. Masters yeah. Green today. Favorite golf tournament of the year. I know very little about it, but I do know this is Masters Sunday. Well, the guy Masters that's winning Sunday. is a very dedicated Christian, Scotty well, Scheffler. Well, very praise dedicated. God. Then yes. he's my, that's who I'm rooting that's for. That's you're rooting for Scotty. Yes, go Scotty. Yeah, and we have a granddaughter named Scotland, Scotty. And you have a middle name named Scott. Yes, yeah, so, so it's all, let's it's vote for, root for Scotty. Your friend Scott Scotty's here Scotty's over there, yeah. So yes. it's all good. Scott, Scott, Scott. And we got a lot of exciting news in, in our household. We, we did. got grandchild number three coming, yeah. Woohoo! Yes. Wow. Yes. Now, yes, be fruitful and multiply. Yeah, <laughs> keep on multiplying. <laughs> And they'll keep coming over. Keep on, but we keep on sending them back home. <laughs> Here you go. Yeah, Trevor and Bianca are expecting, so yes, we're excited we're about so that. Excited. They announced yes. that yesterday. Very, We've been very... keeping our lips shut. shut. Shut, anyway. But now it's out. Yeah, that's exciting times. And one more thing. My mom gets discharged tomorrow. She's coming back home. Yes, that's true. Yes. A 31-day yes. journey. 31-day journey. She yes. may be watching right now, but anyway, a pure miracle. <laughs> She's going sure. home, and I, she says, I'm in church next Sunday. So if you want to see Mother Mary, I mean, the real Mother Mary, 
She's going to be in church next Sunday. That's awesome. Isn't that great? Yeah, that is awesome. All right. You know, um, one of the things uh, we do, we're a giving church, and I just encourage you to continue to do that. God loves what kind of a giver? A cheerful, cheerful giver. Smile at me. God loves a cheerful giver. So you know how to give around here, right? You get through the give boxes, you give online, or send it in through regular mail, and you've been so faithful in doing that. Just want to encourage you to continue to be faithful in your tithes and your offerings. You know, our, our world is an incredible tension right now. And with the Middle East, uh, just they're at war. Uh, just recently, uh, as of this morning here, uh, Israel is attacking Lebanon. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to comment on the geopolitical dynamics that are going on. Um, and people advise me, hey, Greg, don't, don't talk about this because you're going to offend somebody by t uh, talking about this. And I'm not here to, like, say, you know, whatever about the political environment there. Uh, I do know this, that the Bible has called Israel to a special, uh, you know, designation and destiny. And so... It is our responsibility, our responsibility. Psalms 122, it's in your Bible. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Genesis, uh, it talks about in the Abraham covenant. He said, God said to Abraham, who is the patriarch of Israel, if people will bless you, I will bless them. If they will curse you, I will curse them. This is your Bible. And so we have a responsibility according to the Bible, is to pray for Israel. There's so many lives, this is real, lives that are being affected by this. I just got an email from a Palestinian Christian uh, this morning that lives in Bethlehem, and they're fearful also. And so we need to pray, we need to pray. Destiny, keep your eyes. This is, we're in the last days. You're in the last days. Keep your eyes on Russia. Keep your eyes on China. Keep your eyes on North Korea. Keep your eyes on Saudi Arabia. You are going to see, we are going to see it lived out. What the Bible has talked about prophetically, we're going to see it lived out in living colors. We need to do our best to continue to be a witness for Jesus during this yes, time. Yes, yes. We're going to have Kathy. I want you to stand. We're going to go back into worship. But right now, we're going to pray right now in this moment for Israel. Lord, just like Greg said, your word says that we are to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And those who pray for the peace of Jerusalem, their lives will prosper. Lord, you made a covenant, just like he said with Abraham, and your covenants are everlasting. They are everlasting. So right now, Lord God, I pray for the borders of Israel that they would be protected. I pray, Lord God, for the people who don't know you. They don't know Jesus. Jesus is not in their heart. I pray, Lord, in this moment that you would reveal yourself to them, that they would run to you. I pray, Lord, for those that do know you, that you would give, be shalom to them, a peace which surpasses their understanding, Lord God. In this moment, Lord God, we pray, Father, that you would be revealed through war. You would be revealed, Lord God, that Psalms 91, that you would cover them with your wings, that they, you would be a strong tower. You would be a, shilt, a shelter. You would be their refuge, Lord God. We know you are able. We know you are on the throne. And we give you this and we pray for Israel, Lord God, that it would go well for them. You love Israel. It is in your heart. And so we pray for it, Lord God. We love you and we trust you in this moment. Amen. In Jesus name. Let's worship together.
Sing the song of praises to the Lamb And all who've gone before us And all who will believe Will sing the song of ages to the Lamb Come on, let's lift up the name of Jesus Your name is the highest Your name is the greatest everybody just to lift their hands like this right here it's an expression of your worship 
you will worship. You have to choose what you're gonna worship. But this is the picture of heaven. I want you to look around right now. I want you to look. This is the picture of heaven. Every tongue, every tribe, every nation around the throne of God lifting their hands and saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. So right now we praise you, Lord God. We give you glory. You are holy, Lord God. There is none like you, Lord God. And we take this moment to worship you, to give you praise and give you honor, Lord God. Here right now on this earth, one day, Lord God, we will see you in all of your glory. But right now, we lift our hands and we lift our voices to give you praise. And we do this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said together, Amen. Come on, give him a praise right now, church. Give him a praise right now. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to 1 Samuel chapter 16. And as my custom, I'll get there in about 10 minutes. So it gives you a time to find that in your Bible. I'm talking about God is moving. Last week I, I, I talked about the, the value, the DNA of destiny. And that was demonstrated at the wall on Sunday night. That was one of the most powerful walls I've ever been in. And I think I've been in all of them. It was amazing how the Spirit of God was moving in that prayer moment. So we're talking about God is moving, which means that we are to be a Spirit-led church, which is not a given. It is not a given. We are to be a Spirit-led church, which means that God is still moving today in the church and in your life. When God moves, the people of God move, right? When God speaks, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. When God speaks, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying. When God speaks, there is movement. And the movement of God creates life. God, the Spirit of God moved on the face of the, the deep, Genesis chapter 1, and God created. So when God moves, the movement of God creates life. And today I just want to take you a little bit deeper. Is it okay I take you deeper this morning? Take you a little bit deeper in understanding the movement of God. Now, I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to do something that I can't do as a communicator. I, I can only zero in on a portion of what I see God moving in, but I'm, I realize that God is moving in your life. Many of you are here today because you're in a transitional moment in your life. God is moving you from one era to the next era, but I'm going to have to have the Holy Spirit put the application into your heart as I preach today. Somebody say amen. When you think about the movement of God. You must understand that God uses transitional moments to move his people from one place to another place. Now follow me. In God's universe, nothing just happens. In the Hebrew language, which is the language of the Old Testament, there is no word for coincidence. That means this. If there is no word for something, that means the concept doesn't exist because in God's universe, nothing happens by coincidence. I, I don't know if you know this, you're not here by accident this morning. God had a design for you to be here. You know, what has happened in destiny over the last three to four years? What happened last year as we went over to Sacramento? It wasn't a man-made strategy. It didn't just happen. There was a divine design and it put us in the right place at the right time. There is also, in the Hebrew language, no word for adolescence. Now, so follow me. There is no concept in the word of God for a generational gap. There has never been in the mind of God that there would be a gap between generations. You didn't hear what I just said. 
When we start identifying people in groups of people like baby boomers or millennials or Gen X or Gen Z, God doesn't recognize that generational gap. He didn't create generations to be distinct in how they feel or how they think or their experiences in life. That has never been a thought in the mind of God. In fact, it is a strategy of Satan himself. He wants to separate separate and segregate the generations. So we live in a moment right now of huge transition. The world is changing before our very eye. America is changing before our very eye. Nothing is the same anymore. Government is changing. Healthcare is changing. Public education is changing. Business and marketplace, buying and selling, sexual identity and gender, morality and immorality. The modern church is changing. And some people even believe that we should change the word of God. Nothing is the same anymore. The world is in transition. Some of you, your worlds are in transition right now. And what I taught you over this past season was this. When you see something in the natural, it's a reflection of what's taking place in the supernatural. Just as we see the movement in culture, there are things moving in the heavenlies. There is a transition that we can't see with the natural eye. God is moving from one era to the next era. We are in a transitional moment, and if you only can see it, if you have spiritual eyes to perceive it, you need the eyes of revelations to see what God is doing. So God is moving. Isaiah chapter 43 says, Behold, I do a new thing. Mm. Shall it not spring forth? Now watch the spiritual eyes need it. Shall you not know it? I will even make roads in the wilderness and rivers in the, in the desert. I'm telling you, that is a word for somebody in this room right now. God is showing up in your wasteland. And he is about ready to do a new thing. But you need the eyes of revelation to see that right now. God is doing a new thing. Say it with me. God is doing a new thing. So God is a God of movement. And when God begins to move, things begin to transition. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 1. How did I do? Did I get it there in 10 minutes? Probably a little less. That means I got another three or four minutes to preach extra today. Verse one says, now the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul? Saul was the king of Israel. See, I have rejected him from reigning over Israel. Watch this next phrase. This is a transitional statement. Fill your horn with oil and go, I am sending to you, sending you to Jesse the Bethlehemite. For I, watch God saying this, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. That parallels the moment that we're in right now, church. Follow me. We are coming to an end of one thing and to a beginning of another thing. Here's my whole sermon. When we come to the end of one thing, it is always the beginning of another thing. If you are tracking the movement of God, you have to watch and follow the oil. You didn't see that, did you? The oil is the symbol of the Holy Spirit's. The movement of oil is the indication that a transition is happening. And the church right now is in a uh, transitional period of time. And it is important for us to understand that God gives his people an opportunity to move out of what was into what is about to happen. I hope you're following me this morning. Transition occurs When one thing runs its course, when one thing fulfills its purpose and the the moment demands something new to emerge, something new is emerging in your life. I'm telling you, something new is emerging in the church in America that is a remnant church that is on fire with with the passion for God. The reason why people 
and the church miss these moments of transition because it is impossible to move from one moment to the next moment when you're standing in a new moment trying to do an old thing. Mm. The reason why you can't see God doing anything in your life is because you're trying to resurrect yesterday and God say, I'm doing a new thing. It is impossible to stand in a new day and do an old thing and expect the same old, same old results. We must be spirit-led people. Somebody help this preacher and say amen. You have to track the movement of God by following the oil of God. God is moving because when one thing is completed, God is, causes a new thing, a new way to arise in a new day. Now follow me. Whenever God is moving, he is moving something from chaos into order. Some of your lives are in chaos right now. And if you allow the Spirit of God to lead you, he will take you from chaos into order. And he always marks it. Go back to Genesis. Uh, God comes into the chaos of the universe, and ten times God says, let there be. God speaks and says, let there be ten times. And through those ten statements, there is a new beginning, a new day, a new creation. That's why the first book in your Bible is called Genesis. Genesis means new beginning. God marks the beginning of a thing. And it says at the very end of, of, his, of the creation story that God blessed it and called it good. When God begins to do a new thing and you begin to move in the, with the movement of God, God is going to bless it and call it good in your life. Somebody say amen. amen. Ten generations later, the days of Noah come. And this is a transitional moment. The Bible says wickedness and violence covered the face of the earth. Hello, here we are in 2024 and history is repeating itself. God finds a righteous man. God is looking right now all across and seeing if there is a righteous remnant group of people who will follow his commands. And God finds a man named Noah and he builds an ark. God sends a flood to in one moment and transition mankind into another moment. And when the waters recede, God put a rainbow. My God, it is time for the Christian faith to bring back and reclaim the rainbow of God. That's God's promise. That rainbow signified a new day is coming. 900 years after that event, now the people of God are in captivity. You didn't know I was gonna preach you through the whole Bible today. God said, I have heard the cries of my people. I wanna tell somebody in this room, God has heard your cries. I'm gonna put an end to this moment. I'm gonna start a new mo no moment. And God uses Moses to usher in a new era. Moses makes 10 statements, are you seeing a pattern, to Pharaoh. And every time Moses speaks, a new plague is released, 10 plagues. That's the same God who spoke 10 times in Genesis and ushered in a new day. It's the same God who sent 10 plagues to usher in a new era. You are no longer slaves, and they walked out as free men. It is the same God that was going to give 10 statements called the Ten Commandments. God is giving his people a way to live. And whenever there is a transitional moment, remember the principle. He is going to move something from chaos in the, in, into order. That's why he gave people the Ten Commandments to move them from chaos into order. And my God, if America could understand that the Ten Commandments is the best way to live life, I'm telling you, our nation would move from chaos into order. Order. Oh, I'm preaching. I'm preaching way better than you're talking right now. There is a transition. There's 40 years in the wilderness led by Moses. 
Now, God is gonna give them a promised land. There is the end of one era, wilderness walking, and the beginning of another era, promise, uh, the promised land. But to get to that land, what did Israel have to do? They had to cross over the Jordan. Now there's a new leader. Moses can't go into the promised land. There is a new leader, and his name is Joshua, and he's given the assignment to conquer the territory that belonged to the people of God. The people of God are now in the promised land. They are distinguished from every other nation because they worship the one true God. They are governed by God. You didn't hear what I said. They are led by God. They're protected by God. The people of God, Israel, were to be like no other nation on the face of the earth. God was to be their king. It is actually the Old Testament uh, revelation of the prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This was supposed to be the example right here. Israel had no government. God was their king. But God's people were not content to be separated and called out to live a different way. Hello, modern Christian. We're called to be separated. We're called to live a different way. But they wanted to look like every other nation. That is a word to American churches and American Christians. We're not supposed to look like the world. We are supposed to be set apart and separate because all the other nations had an earthly king. Now, here's the thing about God. This is what you're gonna find out about your life right now. God honors free will. He is not gonna hijack your life. The mess that you're in is because you made the decision. The divorce you went through is because you made the decision. Don't you dare blame it on God. God honors your free will. And God will let you, follow me, transition out of what is best and allow you to live the life that you think is best. That's quotable right there. God says, fine, find yourself a king. If I'm not enough for you, do it your way. God gives them what they want. Let this be a warning in your life. God will submit himself to your will. But sometimes your will is not God's. And you will mess up your life. And man named Saul becomes their king. And Saul takes the throne. And it is an end of an era and the beginning of another. Now follow me, from that moment, it was the beginning of the reduction of the God's presence with his people. I have just described what is happening in the modern church right now. The reduction of the presence of God. They picked Saul based on his appearance. The Bible says that he was head and shoulders above every man in the land. Instead, God being their king, They wanted to submit themselves to a man named Saul, to the headship and government of Saul. Even in in God's people's failures to recognize that their blessing came from God. Their blessing was when they honored God. God, in his grace, allows them to anoint Saul as king. Now follow me. He says, I will anoint him as king. But you need to know you're trading God's presence for the best that man can do. Saul doesn't value the presence. Some of you don't value the presence of God in your life. You're so religious. Why are you here if you don't want to engage the presence of God? Saul doesn't value the presence. And if you follow his life, he doesn't inquire about God. He doesn't seek the presence of God. He seeks man's approval. He wants to be popular. He wants people to follow him on Facebook and on the Instagram. He wants to be known. He wants to be go- uh, look good in front of man. I'm telling you, when you man puts you in a place of authority, you are beholden to that man. The completion... Of, of, of what the best that man can do is represented in Saul's life. Saul is king for 42 years. 42 years represents 
the perfection of man. Six is the number of man. Seven is the number of perfection. Gives you 42. And God gives Saul 42 years. Saul represents the best that man can do. I just want to know, when are you going to give up what you're trying to do? What, I mean, what you're trying to produce is the best that you can produce. But if you will make God the God of your life, he will give you the desires of your hearts. Now follow me. Follow me. I know I'm going deeper. I, get, I asked for permission to do this. From Adam to David is 14 generations. From David to the people of God being carried away to Babylon in, in captivity is 14 generations. From Babylon to Matthew chapter 1, the arrival of Jesus is another 14 generations. What does that add up to? 42 generations. God gave Saul 42 years. God gave 42 generations for us to bring back the presence. The presence was lost in the garden when Adam see. He gave us 42 years to bring back the presence. I'm telling you, we need a generation who wants to go get the glory back, who wants to bring the presence back. Saul represents the best that man can do. I don't know about you, but I am tired of the best that man can do. There's got to be a day. There's got to be a new era. And I believe that people are tired of going to church and seeing the best that man can produce. We've had 30 years of manipulating people to come to church, the church growth movement. We have 30 years of professional clergy, ministers who are more worried about their 401k than they are about the presence of God. More worried about numbers of people in their building than they are about the presence of God invading the atmosphere. Somebody's gotta help this preacher right now. I'm tired of institutional faith. I'm tired of amusement park church. I'm tired of all that we offer people. It's go to another Bible study and we can go deeper. I am tired of church that doesn't have the presence of God in it. I'm tired that we can't lay hands upon the sick anymore because we have a doctrine that says that God doesn't do miracles. I am tired of a church that can't call out wickedness and sin because they're afraid of being politically incorrect. I am tired of a church that ushers in people in and out of their building, but they can't cast the devil of culture out. Oh, but destiny, hear me prophetically declare there's coming an end to that era. Things are beginning to shift. I felt it yesterday at the Capitol as I stood and spoke at the foot of the Capitol. I sense that there's a change in the atmosphere. We're coming to the end of best of what man can do because it isn't working anymore. The Bible says it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. We're coming to an end of an era, and he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. We're coming to the end of the works of man, and we're about ready to step into a new day, a resurgence of the power and presence of God amongst his people. Some Somebody say amen. Let me go back to 1 Samuel chapter 16. God says to Samuel, how long are you going to mourn for Saul? Some of you, you need to let go of your past. Get rid of, how long will you mourn? Church, how long will you mourn for what we have given away so freely? How long will we mourn for the good old days? They're not coming back. God's doing something new right now. See that I have rejected him, God says. It's a terrible place to be as the people of God, that God has rejected a current system and you don't even know it. It is possible to be so asleep that you don't even recognize that God has left the building, that God has written Ichabod. The glory has departed from the modern institutional church. I'm telling you, there must be a generation that re uh, emerges. It's a let's go get it back generation in this moment. And if you want to see the movement of God, track the oil. 
God says to Samuel, fill your horn with oil and go. The oil has, has moved away from Saul, the best that man could produce. The prophet Samuel takes the oil and he's about ready to anoint David. David is the one that nobody thought anything would become of his life the one that everybody else rejected. David is anointed to be king. You gotta track the oil because it's the indication that God is about ready to do a new thing. Jesse had eight sons. Jesse parades his sons in front of the prophet Samuel and Samuel looks at each one of them and says, not it. Not it. I'm Samuel saying, I'm not doing what we just did for the last 42 years. Not it, not it, not it. I refuse to waste my anointing on, th on things that are not it in my life. I don't have enough oil to pour on things that aren't working anymore. Institutional faith, feel good church, silence over issues. I am not going to waste our time here at Destiny. It has to be the presence of God. It has to be the anointing. <laughs> Samuel looks at David and says, there's a man that understands the presence. There's a man that isn't afraid of the lion and the bear. There's a man that is not afraid of the giants of culture. There's a man who understands the power of God. There's a man who's willing to seek me first because he has a heart after my own heart. And Samuel says in verse seven, for the Lord does not see as man sees, for man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. Watch the transitional movement of God right here. Samuel anoints David, verse 13. Samuel took the horn of oil and he anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And here's the, here's the transitional moment. And some of you, this is your moment, right? You're in the and right here. You're right here. And the and, and the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. We're in a transitional moment right now. You are in a transitional moment right now. Church, culture, our nation, our world is in a transitional moment right now. And the spirit of the Lord is rising up this new moment with a different kind of believer. A let's go get it back. A believer is not afraid of the call out, the inconsistencies of the current structure. A believer is not afraid and be intimidated of the giants that mock our faith. A believer that is not afraid to take on the corruption of a current establishment. I don't know where we're at in this transitional moment. I look at the events of yesterday and I believe that the time clock of human history is coming very close to an end. But I do not know where we stand in this transitional moment. But I want you to hear, there's always a gap between the announcement of a new day and the fulfillment of it. David was anointed to be king in 1 Samuel chapter 16. But it was 14 years later he took the throne. 14 years of persecution. Some of you, you're in that right there. 14 years of living in caves, 14 years of running for his life. Yet he was the one that carried the anointing. He was the one that carried the oil. There's always a space between the announcement and the fulfillment. And I just wanna say, I want you to get up on your feet right now. Just wanna say, as we are in this transitional moment, 2024, the back half of this year is going to be crazy. You're, you're gonna see an insanity. And this was kind of, this whole thing that happened yesterday it, it is just the beginning of a tidal wave that you are gonna see the unrest at a whole different level in 2024. But I wanna tell you, don't quit, don't faint. Don't lose heart. God has chosen for this moment a remnant 
people for such a time as this. God is putting the end of what man can produce and he has anointed a new day with a new people. And we gotta get ready to move when the oil moves. God is getting ready. God is getting ready to pour it out. He's getting ready to pour it. Anybody want the power of God to be poured out in their life? Anybody need a miracle of God in their life? Anybody want the power of God, the power of the anointing in their life? It says in Acts chapter two, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and daughters will prophesy and your old man will dream dreams and your young man will see this. I'm telling you, we're here in this moment right now. God is doing a new thing. Pour it out, pour it out, pour it out, pour it out. On us, your spirit. Pour it out, pour it out, pour it out, pour it out. On us. Pour it out, pour it out, pour it out, pour it out. On us. Not by strength, not by power. person, every individual in this room, pressing in, asking for more of His Spirit, more of His glory, because it is nothing that we can do, nothing that we are capable of that can move the Spirit of God. But the Spirit of God does require a posture of each and every one of our hearts that is one of surrender, one of obedience. One that says, I come to you with open hands, God, and I surrender all that I want, all that I am. I surrender to you all of my ambitions, all of my dreams, because Holy Spirit, I want you more than I want my own advancement. So Destiny, we're gonna sing that again. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. And it's not because God doesn't think that he's not welcome, it's because sometimes we need to verbalize, Holy Spirit, the posture of my heart is one of surrender, one where I am opening myself to the move of your spirit.
Lord, this morning, we posture our hearts in an attitude of obedience and an attitude of surrender. Holy Spirit, collectively as Destiny Church, would you open our ears to hear what it is that your spirit is saying? God, sometimes it's easy to get loud for you, but even harder to hear you in the silence when we're hearing your voice and not our own ambitions coming through. So we make the statement, the proclamation that here at Destiny, Holy Spirit, you are welcome to come and mess everything up if that is what you will. Send more of your spirit down on us. May there be a great openness to signs and wonders and miracles, but Father, may we not be chasing the signs and wonders and miracles. May we be chasing your heart. We love you, Father. We love you more than anything this world has to offer. You can have all this world, just give us Jesus. We love you so much. Pour your spirit out on us. Pour your spirit out on us. May there be fresh fire, fresh oil. And may we go from that place and be great pursuers of your kingdom. So we close this service out by saying, Father, may your will be done. May your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Come on, church, if you agree with those things, would you give God praise? What a great day to be in the house of the Lord, church. If you need prayer, our prayer partners are available over in the Activity Center. We'll see you on Wednesday.